So writing large numbers have lots of zeros in, in, in it, and then writing small numbers have lots of zeros like after the decimal point also. And it's just really painful to write all those zeros out. So we have a compacted way to write big, big numbers down and small, small numbers down. And we're just gonna quickly review it here. It's very, very simple. What if I want to write the number 316? Now that's not so bad, but what if I wanted to write down this? Okay, now obviously this is 316 million because here's three zeros and here's three more zeros, right? This is okay to write down one time, but if I'm writing a giant calculation, writing 316 million, 316 million all the time, it's really, really pain, really real pain in the rear end. Let me show you how we do it, and then I'll explain why it works. The first thing you do is you write the numbers. The zeros don't matter. Just write the actual non-zero numbers down. So we'll write down 316, but what you do is you stick a decimal point right after the first number. So we always put the decimal after the first uh, non-zero number there. So 3.16, and then we write it down like this, times 10, and how do you figure out the rest? Well, if the decimal is here, right after the three, then you just count as you move your pencil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's gonna be 3.16 times 10 to the eighth. This number is exactly the same as this one. It's just that this one, even though it also kind of looks ugly, it's a little simpler to write down, and as you had more and more and more zeros, the only thing that's gonna change is the exponent up here will be different. Let me give you some more examples and show you how we do this. What if you have the number 4360? What if I wanted to write that in scientific notation? Well, I just write the first digit down, put a decimal, and then write the other digits, 3, 6. I don't even need to write the zero here. All I need is the first, non, all the non-zero numbers. And then I have to write times 10, and then I just count. If the decimal were here, it'd be 1, 2, 3 places. So times 10 to the 3. What if I wanted to write 324? That number is not too big, so I probably wouldn't write it in scientific notation, but I can. I can just take the first digit, stick a decimal, then the other ones follow, but then I have to multiply times 10. How, how far do I go? I put the decimal here, then one, two, because the decimal in all these numbers is after the end here. So it's times 10 to the two. And then finally, a simple number like 27, I would never use scientific notation, but I could 2.7 times 10 to the what? If the decimal's here, I move it one spot, which means it goes times 10 to the one, or you could just take the one out because 10 to the one, multiplying by 10 and 10 to the one is the same thing. Now, we have enough examples here where you see the pattern. All you do to write any number in scientific notation is you take the first digit, stick a decimal after it, then all the remaining digits that are non-zero follow, and then you write times 10, and then you have to count the number of times you move the decimal to get the number you have, and stick that in the exponent. That's the recipe for this, it works every time. But the question is, why does it work? And the reason is because, remember, from exponent lecture, 10 to the three, as an example, is 10 times 10 times 10, that's 1,000. 10 to the power of two is 10 times 10. You all know that that's equal to 100. And 10 to the power of one just means you don't multiply it really by anything, so it's just 10, okay? So you see, as you multiply by increasing powers of 10, you're just multiplying first by 10, then times 100, then times 1,000. So now you see why this works. If I take 2.7 and multiply it by 10 to the 1, I'm just multiplying by 10. The bottom line is, in decimal system, when you multiply by 10, you move the decimal one spot to the right, because it's getting bigger by one decimal place. If you multiply by 100, you're moving the, I guess I'm going the wrong way from your point of view. Um, you multiply by 100, that's two zeros and 100, so you're multiplying by 100, you move the decimal point two times to the right. Multiply by 1,000 is three points to the right, and so on there. So in this example, we move the decimal here two places to the right, that arrives here. Here we move the decimal three places to the right, one, two, and then if you go another one, you have to insert a zero, that's where it comes from. Here we move the decimal eight times, one, two, and then you can see three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you have to add those other zeros as you move the decimal there. But it all comes down to the fact that when you multiply by powers of 10, you're moving the decimal to the right. So we always write the number as the decimal part, and then we take care of the zeros uh, there. Okay, so just to get a little more practice, what if I gave you the number, um, or I should say, I'll just kind of re reiterate, 4.36 times 10 to the three. We already have that one up there. How would you go backwards? If I gave you this in scientific notation, you would say, well, what's gonna happen is, this is gonna be 4.36 times, this is 1,000, 
and I know when I multiply by a thousand, I move the decimal spot, so it's gonna be four, three, six. That means move it one time, two times, I gotta go one more time, which means I need a zero. So it's 4360. Uh, if it was 4.36 times 10 to the, let's say, fifth power, what would it be? It would be 4.36 times, now 10 to the fifth means we're not multiplying by 1,000, we're multiplying by uh, 100,000 because there's two more zeros there, right? So then what would you have? You would go 1, 2, and then I have to go 3, 4, 5. I need to add some more. So it's going to be 4, 3, 6, 3, 4, 5. Just double check yourself. We start here. We move times 10 to the 5, which means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we get to the end there. All right? All right, so this is for large numbers. What we do is we just take the decimal part, we multiply by some power of 10. And that means that we can express a really big number in a compactified way because this is a lot easier to write than this. And if the numbers are even bigger, then you get even more of a savings. Um, now this whole process works for writing very, very small numbers as well. So let's do a couple of examples there. It's the same sort of thing though. I wouldn't probably use scientific notation to write down 0 0.14, but I sure could. How would I do it? What you do is you take the digits part and you write them down, but you put the decimal after the first one, exactly like before. But your real number has a decimal to the left, so you write it down like this, times 10, but you want to move the decimal to the left, not to the right, so it's 10 to the minus 1. Because when you multiply by 10 to the minus 1, it shifts the decimal one spot to the left, which is equal to what you started with. Okay, let's go to the next example, 0 0.032. How would I write that? Well, I ignore everything except for these digits. I just write down 3.2 times 10. I don't want to put a positive number here. That would make the number bigger. I want to shift the decimal one and then one more spot because I have a zero here. So it's going to be minus two. So I start here, one, and then one more gives me that. So it's 10 to the minus two. What if I have 0 0.000236? I take all of my digits and I put the decimal after the first one times 10. And if I start here, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, but it's not positive 4, it's minus 4 because that shifts it to the left. Um, yeah, like that. And then what if I had 0 0.00006, just a single digit at the end, what do I do there? I only have one non-zero digit, so I write it as 6.0, okay? But then I'm shifting it to the left. How many times? If the decimal's here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it has to be written as negative um, you have to write it times 10 to the negative 5. So you see the pattern here. When you take a decimal like this and multiply it by a positive power of 10, you're making the number larger, and you're moving the decimal that many spots to the right. When you take a power of 10 and multiply it by 10 to the minus something, you're making the number smaller because you're shifting the decimal this many places to the left. So positive powers of 10 shift the decimal to the right, Negative powers of 10 shift the decimal to the left. Why do negative powers of 10 shift the decimal to the left? We can briefly talk about that. I can find a pen that writes. Uh, why? Because if you remember, 10 to the minus 1 from algebra is written as 1 over 10 to the first power. You move it to the bottom, make the exponent positive. So what you're going to have is um, 1 tenth is 0 0.1, if you remember. What about 10 to the minus 2? Well, you move that downstairs and make it 1 over 10 squared. So that's 1 over 100 on the bottom, which means 0 0.01. What about 10 to the minus 3? 1 over 10 cubed, it's the exact same pattern, and you get 1 over 1,000, which is 0 0.001. That's 1 thousandth. And then I'll just kind of, um, well, let's just stop there. You get the point. As you go deeper and deeper in negative exponent territory, you have a smaller and smaller number. So when I take 3.2 times 10 to the minus 2, I'm multiplying by 0.01, which means I'm shifting the decimal to the left. So that's the bottom line. You don't have to really think about this, you know, the explanation of the proof. All you need to know is that if I'm trying to represent a small number, I just write it like this with a negative exponent, and I go to the left one spot. That's what I'm trying to get to two spots, that's what I'm trying to get to, so it's negative two, and so on. If I'm trying to make a bigger number, then it's positive exponents moving everything to the right. Make sure you understand this, maybe grab a piece of paper, practice it yourself, because what you can do is you can write numbers down in scientific notation, and you can stick them in your calculator, 
And when you stick like 3.2 times 10 to the three or something in your calculator, it a lot of times will just convert it to the full expanded form and then you can just check yourself. It's important because in calculations you'll be doing this quite a bit. Like if I'm talking about something really, really small or really, really large, I'm not gonna wanna write 316 million down a bunch. I'm gonna write down 3.16 times 10 to the eighth. All right, and that, that's what we're gonna use in physics. So follow me on to the next lesson after you practice this and we'll keep learning the core topics in physics. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.